Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. So the question I've been asking is, uh, can hurricanes uh, trigger earthquakes? And this is part three. In parts one and two, I showed evidence from Hurricane Sandy. There's a network of seismic sensors in North America, in the US, 438 sensors. And these sensors are very, very sensitive. They can detect uh, the vibrations that are set up when Hurricane Sandy was moving up the east coast of the US. And the, all the, the sensors lit up on North America and there was an earthquake off uh, Vancouver, off the Queen Charlotte Islands in Canada. As Hurricane turned left, there was another, the sensors all again lit up in North America and there was another earthquake so, uh, close to the first one. And then as Sandy moved ashore, as she hit the coastline, there was a third earthquake. So I think the evidence for that earthquake is pretty clear that Sandy actually was a, uh, a big part of a tri as a trigger in, in those earthquakes occurring. Um, also discussed how Hurricane Irene in 2011 um, was responsible for an uptick in aftershocks after an earthquake um, that hit Virginia, a, a 5.8 or 5.9 on the Richter scale. So the question is, what about the, is there a connection between the recent uh, hurricanes, Hurricane Irma and the earthquake off the coast of Mexico, Hurricane Maria and the earthquake uh, just south of Mexico City and also the volcano that was triggered. So, so those uh, connections are not so clear as Sandy is because we don't have the data on the um, very sensitive, very accurate, accurate earthquake sensors. They're not installed in those regions or I don't have access to the data. So I can just show you the timing of the event. And if, uh, you know, if we can believe the story with Sandy, which is, looks, looks very solid, it looks very clear to me, then perhaps there is a link with these other storms. So this is my uh, website, and uh, please consider supporting my work. Uh, suggest what videos you'd like to see. Give me feedback and comments, and uh, and uh, you know if you kick a few bucks to my PayPal, you can use any credit card. You don't need PayPal yourself. Then I'll try to do the videos that you're requesting. So first of all, let's look at what we do know about Harvey. So. Hurricane Harvey dumped so much water on Texas and Louisiana that it warped the crust and it caused um, the land to subside about an inch um, over around in the Houston area. So first of all, how much water was there? 27 trillion gallons of water. It's hard to fathom uh, how much rain this is. Uh, 50 inches or over four feet according to some weather stations in the region, one in a thousand year flood. Of course, these statistics, you know, what does one in a thousand years mean? It, I mean, today maybe it's one in a hundred years or one in 50 years or even less. Um, this is based on a stable climate. So if the climate was still stable, it would be one in a thousand years. But those statistics I've talked about many times as not being that accurate now. Um, so, over six days, 27 trillion gallons of water. How much is that? Well, this is Harvey, compare it to how much rain fell with Katrina. Um, okay, it keeps showing the same image. Okay, so huge amounts of water fell. So what did that water do? Well, these floodwaters were so extreme that they warped the Earth's crust. So. We can have a look here. So this was tweeted out. Um, this is GPS data showing that the flood water was so large that it flexed, it flexed the crust of the earth. It pushed Houston down by about two centimeters. An inch is 2.54 centimeters. So uh, uh, 0.8 of an inch or so. The areas of Houston were pushed down. You can see these little dots with the down arrow. This is 1.5 centimeters. The, long, the longer the arrow down, the more the crust was depressed. And so around the Houston area, the arrows are, are, are larger. OK, 
Okay, so that obviously puts lots of stresses on the surface. Okay, so there is definitely, you know, there is this connection between meteorological events and um, seismic or and geological events. Okay, so let's talk about the plates here. The continental plates, the tectonic plates, we've got the Caribbean plate here, we've got the Cocos plate here, which is pushing up, and we've got the South American plate and the North American plate here. So this plate here is moving two centimeters per year. Okay, transverse fault here. Okay, so this is the sort of structure that we see. Now, in terms of the earthquakes, if you just Google USGS earthquake, um, you get this site, and it's very good. It gives you the most recent updates on earthquakes, and there's other links down here on the hazards programs and etc. One of the really interesting things here is the live earthquakes map. Um, and you can look here, this is a live earthquakes map, and this is for today, Friday, September 22nd. You can see what quakes have occurred. So just, so, you know, here, here we go, a magnitude 4.9, um, Solomon Islands region. What else has happened today? We've got 5.6, 5.8, 5.7, west, uh, 200 kilometers west of Ferndale, California and there's one 58 kilometers west here. So those are the things happening today. So you can go back, and there's also these global incident maps. So um, hazmat situations, earthquakes, forest fires, uh, so this is aviation incidents. So this is real-time data, border security issues. There's a whole bunch of different things here that are very useful. So let's get back to the Mexico quake. So, if I Google Google Images, bring it up and go Mexico Earthquake 2017, I get all the images from the quake, and there's a couple maps here. So let's look at the first map here. So this map here shows the earthquake that occurred September 8th, 2017 at 0449 GMT, magnitude 8.1, big quake, depth 69.7 kilometers. This is the region here, okay? So this is right at the border of three plates. We've got the North American plate, we've got the Caribbean plate, and we've got the Cocoa plate. So right here, at this point, there was an earthquake at this particular time, September 8th. Okay, let's have a look at what was going on um, with the hurricane. So, so this is Earth Null School. Um, you can click here to go between local and UTC. So we want UTC, or Greenwich Mean Time, so three this is uh, three o'clock and I can cycle through. This is six o'clock. So the earthquake occurred on September 8th at 4.49 GMT. So we can see where the, where the storms are. So we've got uh, Hurricane Irma here. It's, it's chewing up islands in the Caribbean. Okay, um, this is Hurricane Jose here, I believe, which is following. And uh, uh, this is uh, Cadia, Hurricane Cadia in the Gulf, okay? So the earthquake occurred, um, going back to where the earthquake occurred, it was right here at the border of those three plates. So that would be on this map, it was down in, let me just get this correct here, right down here in this region was where the quake occurred the 8.1 um, under, underneath the ocean. Okay, so, you know, how would it be, so perhaps the shaking from these hurricanes was enough to um, light up sensors and, and trigger this uh, quake, which is about to go already. We don't know, we don't have enough data. I don't have sensors. I would need sensors in this whole region, perhaps some sensors on the Caribbean to measure the shaking from the storms and try to correlate them with the uh, quake there. Um, so just to remind you, um, this is a view here, a different view of the Caribbean plates. Um, so the hurricane, um, it's right up here. Um, is Irma, Irma is right up here. So we can see, you know, Irma is up here in this region. You know, if it's shaking the plate, the, the vibration can be transferred along the, you know, across the plate or along the fault lines of the plate. And this is over here where we, we saw the uh, quake. 
the Coco's plate is moving six centimeters per year, which is at a very fast clip. It's, you know, two and a half inches or so um, moving up that way. The, uh, okay, so all that you can see the magnitude of the earthquakes here. Um, the larger the, the larger and bright red the dots are, the bigger the quake. These are quakes over a period of time from 74 to present day. And, uh, you know, one of the quakes, so this is, these are some of the fault lines around um, the islands of Hispaniola. This is Port-au-Prince, Haiti, uh, where the quake was. This is movement of the quake in 2010. So this is showing Port-au-Prince and the 2010 quake with the aftershocks. You know, there are, you know, anywhere from 80,000 to 200,000 people that were killed in this particular quake in Haiti in, in 2010, okay? So all of the information is there. Now let's go to the more recent quake. So September 19th, 1814, GMT, we had a magnitude 7.1 quake at a depth of 51 kilometers, and that was just southeast of Mexico City here. Okay, this is the epicenter of the 8.1 on September 8th. Okay, so let's see what the hurricanes are doing in this particular situation. So here we have, um, here we have the, the uh, September, September 19th at 1800, uh, right? This hurricane 14 minutes later, 1814 was when this um, earthquake occurred, the 7.1 occurred. So here we have Maria, it's just gone through some of the Caribbean islands here, and it's heading towards Puerto Rico. Okay, so this is where we have it. There's Hurricane Jose up there. Um, so let's have a look at, um, on our map here. So this is where the hurricane is up here. And now we have the quake over here um, in, uh, in, in Mexico, just south of Mexico City. Okay, so, okay, so again, um, you know, in Sandy, it's pretty clear cut, but we don't have the sensors to show the individual localized shaking in the different regions. Um, I'm just pointing out that, you know, the coincidences are building up too much for it to be just coincidences. Okay, um, now there's an additional spin on this quake in Mexico because it triggered a volcanic eruption. So there's some images. This is from a Forbes article. Um, there's some of the pancaking of the buildings. Again, it's not the quakes that kill people, it's falling concrete generally, falling buildings that, that kill people. We, you know, and we can build buildings a lot safer. We just need to commit ourselves to doing it to reduce uh, fatalities. So, so, um, so this is a quake and here's the plates. So this is a, Plate move, this is moving up here. You can see the, the way the different plates are moving. This is in millimeters per year, 76 millimeters per year is about three inches a year. I think this number is correct. I think this is a typo, should be 67 here. Um, this is a cross section. This is the depth. This is where the quake was, about 50 kilometers down. Um, and the distance from a reference point in the subducting slab. So that would probably be the distance um, that's the distance as you, so this plate's moving up, subducting underneath, that's probably the distance from the coastline or something. Um, so here we go, um, you know, so the plate's moving underneath and at the friction, it basically, the ground gave way, there was an elastic rebound. Um, although the, it's shown as a point, it's really over a distance. In this case, 50 kilometer by 20 kilometer in size, that will, will determine how long the quake is lasting for. Um, and then there was an earth, there was a volcano. So here's the volcano that was triggered. Um, and the exact, so what's happening is if a volcano is primed to go, the vibrations and shaking from the quake can trigger the volcano to go. So let's have a look here. I'm looking at CO carbon monoxide. This is just before the quake and I'll advance forward and the volcano and you can see the CO levels are increasing rapidly and then decreasing. And if we look at the particulates, we can see the particulates are increasing. PM10 are increasing significantly from the volcano and then decreasing. 
So what can we say? We can say that the earthquake probably triggered the volcano, which was primed to go, and hurricanes maybe triggered the earthquake. So thank you.